Today, I'm fishing for trophy rainbow and brown trout with nymphs and streamers. I'm going to teach you a couple new techniques that you're going to want to learn. It's the final day of my Pigapalooza on the East Walker River, and it's coming up right now. There we go. Yep, I'm going to swing. Big old fish. Good. Hey everybody, welcome to Familiar Waters and FWFishing.com. I'm Mike Pulaski, host of Familiar Waters, and as you can see, former 11-year pro quarterback. Today, I'm fishing the East Walker River. This is the final show in a four-part series on this river, which was a phenomenal day. We were sticking massive rainbow and brown trout all day long with streamers, with nymphs, uh, with a couple different techniques. And it was just one of those days that are, are phenomenal to go down in your fishing annals. But today... We've moved up the river. It's the last hour and a half, and we are going to take advantage of a couple of environmental things going on. I'm going to show you those techniques coming up. Before we get started, make sure if you haven't done it yet that you subscribe and ring that bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Any questions, also leave those down below. I'm a coach at heart. I want to help you guys learn how to fly fish and have days like this day on the East Walker. Right now, it's the golden hour, last hour and a half of a day, and we have the perfect hole to finish on. I'm going to show you how to essentially scrub an entire hole like this to try to get every fish in there that's willing to eat. And I'm going to kick it off by what I call either painting or scraping the edge of a seam with a massive bunny streamer. All right, Mike, so we're going to come in down here. This is uh, the cable hole. I'm gonna start, go ahead. All right. I'm gonna start at the tail out. Um, I wanna run that streamer through it first. Okay. So let's just, uh, you know, kind of wade out 10 feet or so. We're gonna launch that streamer up the inside seam, burn that thing straight back. Okay. Um, and then Let's we'll, see if we can get in. Yeah, and we'll just kind of mow the lawn away, uh, going out, and then uh, after we're done with the streamer, we'll run the nymphs through it. Let's see if we'll whack one of those big old brownies. We've some got nice fish in here. A great little run here. That's classic trout water. You can see there's a nice soft spot back here with all this water. And as we come up top, there's a faster seam that ends to an inside bend. And in that bend, the water slows down. You make a cast, and it's right on that transition water that these fish will sit. And uh, so I've got, again, another big bunny streamer on here. So I'm going to strip out some line and put a cast up top and see if I can't get into one of these big browns that we've seen the walker's famous for. Oh, there we go. There he is. Nice. That one was <laughs> solid. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> nice. Come here, bud. Now I have the streamer on here, so this guy isn't going to get downstream in a hurry. I can work him a little tougher and keep him It's a good top. fish. Yeah, it is. Big old fish. Brownie? Yeah, brownie. <laughs> nice. Look at that. Beautiful. And that was perfect. That came tight. I mean, he was solid. Just smacked it. Perfect. Gorgeous brown. Beautiful. That is a great fish to kick it off. Remember, when you are painting or skating the edge of a hole like this, the key is to get your bug right on the edge of that seam where those fish are going to be positioned in the feed and in their hole. Because a bunny streamer, a big streamer like this, or any large streamer really, is as likely to cause a defensive strike where a fish is trying to chase a smaller fish out of their hole as it is to get a big fish to eat. Now, the fish in the East Walker love to eat those perch and muddlers and all the other small bait fish that they have in the river. But a defensive strike is just as good as an eat strike with trout like this because either way, with that big bunny streamer and the articulated body, when they lock on, you're in good shape. So, one was good. We got the top. I told you I'm going to show you how to scrub the hole. So I turn around. I fished out the top. I come down to the bottom. This time, I'm going to use a little different technique. Rather than trying to rip it down through the hole and get that defensive strike, I'm going to swing it with that dying minnow twitch, and it's really effective. Yeah, that'll get down. Nice. Twitch. Ha, ha, ha. 
Fox submission hold on him right away. <laughs> oh, look at that pretty bow. <laughs> pretty, huh? A little smaller than the last one. Yeah. And you know, so many times people give brown trout the bad reputation of being all the fish eaters in the stream. As you can see, rainbows here come in and clobber these things too. We switched out the streamer <laughs> to this big, nasty looking <laughs> streamer pattern. And that rainbow came up and ate it just the same as any brown trout would. Any big fish is out here looking for forage. They're looking for minnows, they're looking for chubs, they're looking for this, because that's a big snack. Yep. <laughs> so that is a couple of nice fish on a big old bunny streamer. I love it. I love pulling the big bugs like that. But one of the keys to being successful when you're fishing is being aware of environmental cues. And so on this day, the water flows actually came up during the day as we were fishing which means you're going to get a lot more dislodged terrestrials and you're going to get a lot more movement out of the smaller subaquatic life forms in the stream, one of them being crawdads. We used a crawdad earlier on the, on the last couple pieces of content that we put out. Uh, if you haven't seen it, there'll be a card right up there and there'll be cards at the end that you can click on uh, with links down below as well. But the crawdad pattern was really good under the bridge. And so we are going back to that crawdad pattern because these fish are up, they're on the feed. Again, it's the golden hour and they are ready to eat. Oh, yep. oh I think that might be there a fish. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Did that go running down the Yeah, indicator took off. That's a pretty good sign that it's going to be a fish. That's a crawdad eat right it's there. Gonna, it's going to have fins <laughs> in the end. Indicator just leaves a bubble trail. It's a nice big bow. Go. Nice. Come here, fish. I'm gonna put go. some wood to him. He's got three X on. There you go. There we go. Nice. <laughs> nice fish. Oh, this pops right out. Beautiful. Nice bow. Look at that. That is awesome. haven't hit this whole back pocket, which is really good rainbow water here. Right. There's a top section up there still, which is brown water. And I think that we can get at least one more out of here. Oh, at least, yeah. Right. <laughs> so just like we did with the streamer now, we're going to cover water. A lot of times guys will hit the top of a hole, the A spot, not get anything, and kind of move out. But when you're in a hole like this, you got to scrub the whole thing, especially when you're nymphing, because you, you never know exactly what's going on with your bug while it's underwater. And so you got to make sure you make a ton of casts going through it so that you scrub everything. In this case, it only took me three casts to hook into my second finish. There he is. There he is. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good fish. Looks like another nice brown. Yeah. Just a subtle little grab, too, just kind yeah. of stopped it. Yeah. He's on the crawdad, too. He's getting below you. Nice fish. Go and work his Good head fit. up. Got him. A cooperative. <laughs> Look at that. Another great brownie. Wow, two of those big, big, pretty pigs. Thick. In this hole. So now I've got two really nice fish on big streamers. I've got two really nice fish on crawdad patterns, which you don't often hear that when you're talking about a trout show. 
But again, I told you, you got to be aware of environmental cues. It's summer. It's late afternoon. The caddis are starting to pop. We're not seeing any trout kind of keyed into them for dry fly fishing yet. But what that means is you have caddis in the drift. So what are you tying up here? So we've got a little uh, CDC caddis emerger. Okay. And it's kind of a tan brownish color. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of desiccant on it, kind of fluff it up, create that air bubble effect around the fly, um, much like the naturals, you know. So at the end of the drift, you want to let that line come tight. And, uh, you know, don't just pull it out at the end of the jet drift. Let the fly swing up to the surface, see if we can get any fish to chase it down. Yeah, an old school technique called a rising ring lift. Just lift it at the end and create that emerging look. Exactly. Put it right in that soft seam right there. Yep, right there. Maybe just a hair right of that on the next one. Right there, too. There we go. Yep, on the, on the swing. swing. Big old fish. There you go. <laughs> nice. Where I put my net. Big old head on that thing. We gotta come down. Yeah, it. keep coming down. Just kind of work him to the right. Yeah. There you go. Keep lifting right there. Keep lifting. Got him. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> on the swing. Nice. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh. Big old. Sexy. Big old bow. Girthy. About 18, 19. Well, you heard us say on the swing, uh, when insects emerge in a river like this, they start on the bottom in a nymphal form, and then they form this gas bubble, and it swings up through the water column, and they're really vulnerable to be eaten at that point, which is why Brad put that dry shake on it, right? Right. At the end of the drift, it, you know, it'll help create a little bit of buoyancy in the fly. The fly is going to want to come up, create it like an air bubble around the fly. And, uh, you know, at the end of your dead drift, you want to let that line come tight, let those flies come up. Yeah, you swing them up, getting them moving to that water column, and these fish know that's the most vulnerable time for that bug. They come up and they just whack it, and it's kind of like pulling a streamer. Right, yeah. It's an aggressive grab, usually, you know, because the fish has to move to the fly as opposed to the dead drift, letting the fly come to them. Yeah, you're already tight, and wah! You hooked up. It's a fun grab. Yeah, it's, it's a good feel. That's nice. Yeah. Well, that is some kind of fishing. Five fish, three different bugs, three different techniques, and just a fantastic day overall on the Sereni Ranch East Walker River. That'll do it for me from the Sereni Ranch on the East Walker River. It was a phenomenal day of fishing. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget the links down below flies, gear, tips, all of that at fwfishing.com. We'll be coming back with more incredible fishing action in the salt, in the freshwater. But until then, I'm Mike Pulaski, and I'll see you on the next piece of Familiar Waters.